Hello everyone and welcome to our first investment update video for 2021 and already there is so much to talk about. Um, I'm delighted once again to have Hugh Gimber, Global Market Strategist for JP Morgan, here with me today, who will run through uh, recent events in the US and how these could affect your investment portfolios. But before we start, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button below somewhere and press the like button if you found this video to be of value. So back to current events and Many thanks for your time today, Hugh. Um, kicking things off, for those who aren't aware of the recent Georgia Senate elections, what's actually happened? Sure. Well, thanks for having me. And um, this is really important. If I think back to the 3rd of November, we obviously had the presidential election last year, but then we had two other really consequential elections going on as well. So the first for the House and the second for the Senate. The House was cleared up very quickly. The Democrats retained control there. But then for the past couple of months, we've been waiting really to find out how these final two seats in the Senate were going to fall and therefore who was going to have control. And as it was last week, the Democrats won both of those seats. And so out of the 100 seats in the Senate, we now have a tie, 50 seats with the Democrats, 50 seats with the Republicans. Most importantly, it's the vice president that has the deciding vote, and therefore it will be the incoming vice president, Kamala Harris, for the Democrats, that's able to settle a tie, and therefore the Democrats have control. So a really important development in terms of how much of their policy agenda they might be able to get through. So, so why is this such an important issue for investors and investment portfolios? Well, it's about really how much the Democrats are going to be able to dictate the policy agenda. So first of all, in terms of spending, it's really important because in the Senate, the way it works is that for lots of issues, you need to get a majority of 60 or above to be able to move things forward. But there are certain taxation and spending issues in particular where you only require a 50 seat majority, certain processes that can be used to basically get policy through without needing to hit that 60 mark. And so what investors are now looking at is to say, okay, well, with this very slender but significant Democrat majority, it now increases the likelihood that they can get another stimulus package through pretty quickly. Probably one of the top things on their agenda uh, post Joe Biden's inauguration that's coming up. Mm -hmm. And so what that's doing to markets is it's increasing people's growth expectations we could be looking, for example, at another round of stimulus checks. Joe Biden's been talking recently about wanting to do a third round of stimulus checks, perhaps even $2,000 per person, provided you earn below a certain income threshold. And so investors are upgrading their expectations for economic growth in the US. That's putting pressure upwards on government bond yields. Mm -hmm. And it's also improving the outlook for equities and improving earnings expectations generally. Mm -hmm. So looking at portfolios, looking at asset classes, where do you believe or, 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 or which asset classes do you believe will, will win from this and which ones will come under pressure? Yes, there are probably two levels to this. The first one is to say that this is better for stocks than it is for bonds. Mm -hmm. As I say, that expectation of a quicker economic rebound this year is boosting the prospect for equities but it's also coming with an expectation of a bigger deficit for the US government and therefore putting some upward pressure on government bond yields. And as we know, that rise in bond yields is not good for bond prices. Mm. Then it gets more interesting, I think, if you look one level down and you say, OK, it's not just good for stocks versus bonds, but where is it going to be most helpful within the stock market? And there what we're seeing is that first of all, it's helping smaller stocks, smaller company stocks at the expense of the large caps that we know did so well last year. And from a sector point of view, it's also helping sectors such as the financials, both in terms of increasing the outlook for their profit margins with higher interest rates and steeper government bond yield curves, but also just bringing back to the rest of the pack some of the growth stock valuations that were helped so much last year by the big decline in interest rates. Mm. Now, I can't, I can't have you here without asking a question about inflation. Um, will this 
uh, reflation trade, as some people are calling it. Do you believe that this will become inflationary? So that's a really important topic. And I think it's going to depend on the extent to which this new stimulus tries to balance out the amount of money that's going to different parts of the economy, whether it's redistributive across different income brackets. Mm -hmm. Because what we found generally is that when um, higher income parts of the population tend to receive more money, they have a higher inclination to save. And therefore, that type of stimulus tends to have less of an inflationary impact. Whereas if you start to redistribute that and focus more on the low and middle income households, then they often tend to spend more of that stimulus and therefore it can have a more powerful inflationary effect. So I think we're going to have to wait and see, frankly, how successful these policies are. But if they are going to focus much more on redistributing wealth across the US economy, then clearly there's the potential for that to lead to higher inflation further down the road. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting. Like you say, it's, it's a case of waiting to see, but already we're, we're, we're a matter of weeks into the year and we're seeing quite significant um, moves and quite con- uh, significant considerations that everyone should take on their investment portfolios. Once again, Hugh, it's an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Uh, You take care and I'm sure we'll catch up soon.